Mythos Busters, investigating the mystery, monsters, and madness of Arkham Horror, the card game. Hello and welcome to episode 72 of Mythos Busters. I'm Sean. Joining me tonight are my bros. Uh, let's start with Nick. Hey, Nick. Hello. How you doing? I'm well. You thought about not starting with me. Uh, it crossed my mind for a brief second. Um, uh, I'm, hap- I'm pleased with my decision, though. It's, it's fine. Good. Okay, I'll Joining just leave. Us... Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us as well is Scott. Hey, Scott. Do you need me to give you two some time alone, or no, just, that... just, just saving the best for last? Don't don't tell Nick. <laughs> I'm doing well. <laughs> Good. Yes. Uh, absent at the moment, though, it's possible we might get a sneak attack uh, at at a certain point if his internet starts working. Is Ian? Um, we have a very special episode for you guys tonight. We're going to run over our basic check-ins. We've got our Blackest Friday haiku contest to resolve, and we've got some really fun entries to run through, so pay attention to that. Um, We've got some very, very odd and exciting and at least buzzworthy news to cover. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Our our main topic tonight, uh, last episode we pledged we were going to take uh, the community's vote on which investigator each of us should use to draw a chaos, an ultimatum of chaos, randomly generated deck for... Sorry, my prepositions kind of got lost in that rambling. Um, And we're going to do that, and... God, I am so terrified. (laughs) I am so terrified, because they're going to be... We're going to discuss them and talk about what we're going to... uh, What we're going to play, how we're going to try to play them, and and so on and so forth. If we have any extra time in the episode, we're going to wrap up a couple other patron questions from the ongoing list. And if you're a patron, don't forget, you can submit those at any time. Keep our list going. We like having them. And, of course, we'll round it out with some technical time. But before we get to any of that, I want to check in with y'all. Uh, Scott, what, what Arkham hath ye played of late? Well, I'm doing a all-rogue Return to Carcosa playthrough. Ugh. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, it, it's going okay. Uh, we've got <laughs> Tony. Is it Tony or Tommy? I always get the two names. Victor. Tony is the rogue. Tony I know, is the they rogue. shouldn't have released him in the same box. Like, come on. Yeah, mm. well, I mean, whatever. Um, it's like Diana and Diana in the same cycle. Oh my god, you're right! <laughs> uh, so, Tony is our killer. Um, Finn is more our kluver. And I am playing Safina. And leaning pretty heavily onto the misty Griefina? side. No, not Grafina. Because <laughs> um, we're playing on hard, and that's griefy enough. Uh, and yeah, Return to Carcosa's, you know, there's some slight changes, but I think mm. Carcosa was just an awesome cycle in general. And mm. it just tweaks a few things. It um, fixes little cheats you can do. You know, like, if you're playing with like rules as written, um, there's little ways you can get around... I, certain mechanics of the game and i can't remember which but i remember reading the cards being like oh i see what you did there matt and he just like mm. tweaked it so you have to play it the way it was intended um right and yeah it's it's going uh, decently well it's it's been chaotic in a good way like there's times where we're just like holy shit i don't know what we're gonna do <laughs> to try and get out of situations mm. um but yeah i think the last game we were playing the uh pallid mask and Casey was one of the players. He's playing Tony. And I don't think... He he drew a single weapon the entire game. Oh. And, <laughs> That's rough. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe it was the, when we were in the catacombs. That was the one where, like, Safina... I That's think I Palette killed... Mask. I, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, I killed, like, nine or ten enemies. And he's just like, yeah, we got out of the catacombs and no one had more than one health or sanity left. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just a <laughs> ridiculous fly by the sea your pants escape it's it's actually quite fun so <laughs> that's been my my arkham so far oh and uh last episode i wasn't here was the episode before i did Two my ago. oh okay i already talked about uh labyrinths of lunacy then yep 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 good old labyrinths mm-hmm. uh how about you nick 
Um, I have continued my solo Mandy Return to Carcosa campaign, in which I am also uh, inserting the standalones. So I ran solo Mandy through... What was the last one that I did? Um, I don't remember, because it's been a while. Um, and then I also am continuing my solo uh, Dream Eaters campaigns. Uh, specifically, did Search for Kadath with um, solo Luke. And that, I think, is now in my top three scenarios of all time, because that one is amazing. Hmm. Um, I'm excited to play that more. Do you disagree, Scott? I have not played it. So oh, okay. I've just been hearing praise of praise, like heaps yes. of praise on this scenario. I would agree. So. It's very enjoyable and fun. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and then also uh, continued the campaign. I originally started it as uh, hopes that it would be a four player campaign, but only one other person was able to make it when we started. Um, and then this next session we did, the two other people that I had originally invited were able to make it, but not the one who started it. So anyway, we did a three player campaign. Sounds like every RPG party ever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we, we started or we did a, um, a three player, a couple three player games that are part of a campaign in which we're doing Return to the Night of the Zealot and a bun- and all of the standalones. And we started delving into the standalones. And what I did was I, for, well, we played um, Carolyn, uh, Joe, and I played Tony. And I set out all the standalones and I said, these are the standalones and, and we can play them in any order we want. Like we had three experience so we could do any one of them. Um, and I basically arranged them via difficulty. And I was like, this one's the hardest, but it it opens up another standalone option. And, and this one's the easiest, that sort of thing. And they were all like, I want a challenge. So we did the um, Eternal Slumber or whatever the first Egyptian mm-hmm. one is. Mm-hmm. And it went poorly. It went very <laughs> poorly. As it um, often does. Yeah, we just like, and they're not these. The other three players are players that don't play Arkham regularly. Like they only ever play it with me, and we haven't played it in probably almost a year. Right. So, um, like we had just started exploring. I think we got two of the explore locations out, and then that was when we all resigned because we're like, we cannot handle everything that's going on. Um, and then from there, we went on to Excelsior. Uh, and that also <laughs> ripped us a new one because really? none of us could get, yeah, none of us could get set up. Like Tony mm. could not find a weapon for anything and Carolyn could not get any of her, uh, horror removal. Um, and then we just, it took us too long to deal with the, uh, Arkham officers. Like they kept, like that was eating so many of our turns, just trying to get doom off of them that eventually we all resigned. Um, but uh, minor spoiler alert for Excelsior. Um, we have the opportunity to redo it. So, um, yeah. And then beyond that, uh, uh, the only other thing uh, I'm, I'm, then I haven't played Arkham for a while. Uh, that's probably, that was probably two weeks ago now that was, and that was my last game that I played. Sure. Um, but just today, so I decided recently I'm launching into another story. I apologize. I decided <laughs> recently that um, one of my biggest hurdles for, I didn't decide, but anyway, um, one of my biggest hurdles for playing Arkham is having to tear down and rebuild all my decks. Sure. Um, I hate that. And I've already talked about that on the show, so I don't need to go into it. But um, I finally decided to create some replacement cards uh, using the official art when I can, um, but otherwise finding other art if I can't get good images of the official art. And anyway, just printing the cards that I use a lot. Um, and I got those in the mail today and I'm so, now I'm so excited to like have more than my normal two decks built. Um, and I, uh, no one tell Matt this because I know it's like, you shouldn't be doing this, but I'm just, I just love this stuff. Mm-hmm. So like I did, um, there's, I think I did 12 seeker cards because in my opinion, seeker has the most staples that are required, um, for a lot of their like solo decks. There are a fair few cards that just kind of go in, aren't there? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I, mm-hmm. I have 12 secret cards i have like eight guardian cards um and then some and then a smattering of survivor rogue and mystic um and it's all the stuff that you would expect to see in you know multiple decks like water protection and mind over matter and deduction vicious blow that sort of thing so mm-hmm. yeah i'm excited to use those um and also i updated like i made extra copies of milan and i changed his text to match the taboo so now Ooh. i have the option when i'm building for other people um to give them either the taboo one or the non-taboo one um so i was gonna say that's a taboo that's probably not gonna go away 
Mm-hmm. Like that that's probably the right. pretty safe. Yeah. That's Malone's yeah, final went... form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I did I did that with like elusive as well and um and with uh, uh what is it? <laughs> Machete. So mm. those cards that, that um that I know, like the ones that I know are are taboo and I still occasionally use Machete I don't use too often, but elusive I use a lot and Milan I use a lot. So I wanted to have those actually represented on the card. So mm. I have always thought I thought this for Lord of the Rings first, but um, when FFG issues an errata, or a taboo in this case, hmm. it would be really cool if they put out a little print-on-demand pack. Right? I think the only difference with taboo is it's not meant to be a permanent errata, like it can sure. ebb and flow. Sure. I know that's been the thing about it, but like for Lord of the Rings, that would be... Or wait till yeah, they I'd, get... I'd buy a $10 pack every time a new FAQ comes out, but then again, I'm a diehard. I would, too. I yeah. Would. Yeah. I know in Lord of the Rings, like, you have enough to fill, like, almost a deluxe box with the amount of cards that are rotted. <laughs> so. I'm more interested in the player cards. Yes, Lord of the Rings has had a lot of encounter cards around. I, though I suppose Arkham has at this no, point, No, I'm, I'm talking about player cards. Like, you could probably at least fill a, uh, like, a, a Gen Con scenario pack if you wanted, like, three of, of the player cards mm. in Lord of the Rings. Wow. <laughs> you know what? It's been a while since I paid attention, so I'd believe it. What have you been playing, Sean? Uh, yeah, so then for my part, um, I'm still stalled in my Jim and Joe campaign I actually have before the back Black Throne set up on my table next to me. Next time I play, mm. I'm going to finally finish that thing. Um, but beyond that, I did get caught up in Dream Eaters with uh, Justin, friend of the show, and Administrative mm. Answer. We played um, Search for Kadath, and yes, very fun scenario. Very cool, oh, very... So different and flavorful and kind of it just feels mechanically distinct um Mm -hmm. big big fan of that one also it's nice to see arkham tackle sailing (laughs) yes (laughs) spoilers no it's when you play it you'll be like oh this is nothing yeah yeah no i mean they did it in a really cool way a very minimalistic i don't know yeah very much enjoyed it um, and then I have continued my solo Patrice Return to Dunwich Legacy campaign. Um, and I got iced like one <laughs> turn away, one turn away from uh, finishing extracurricular activity. And here was Ooh. the bad part. <sighs> I was I investigated to hit the last clue. I was three up, pulled a minus four, and then watched my deny existence go away. And then drew into the last part of my deck and and uh, Beyond the Veil just scorched me. Just, just, oh. uh, it was the most Patrice moment I've had, but it was, you know, I, I accepted it. It's, it's what I did to myself by starting this campaign, so. <laughs> um, so yeah, on to, on to Miskatonic Museum next, and that one doesn't, that one, wait, that one does have Beyond the Veil, doesn't it? Damn. That's uh, in yep. like five of the eight scenarios. I'm yeah. so fucked. It's pretty frequent. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are the odds that I'm ever going to have my deny in my hand? Yeah. <laughs> Not great. Based Poor. on my anecdotal evidence sample size of one. Mm-hmm. All right. Best of luck. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's that's about all I've played lately. Obviously, with the holidays, got a little busy running around with family and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, a little bit lighter on the Arkham side. Well, we started our campaign. Oh, that's Lens. right! We totally... Did. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. And we're halfway through uh, the second scenario forget the name already for which campaign uh the dream eaters the we're halfway through the woke scenario waking nightmares <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was was it a saturday night that scott and i were both probably just like sitting on the couch or at the desk yeah after a long week i think you had gotten off a night shift and i had yeah just drinking like beer that. and there and was, was a like... certain point where we were slowing down and there were long pauses between us talking to each other and scott mm-hmm. just goes I think we should save this and go to bed. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like 1 a.m. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think we started at like 9.30-ish. Oh, my God. And we, sounds to about play, right. To play the first two scenarios and build our decks on top of that. Like, that was yes, like yeah, we, 9.30, we let's get decks. on Discord and build our decks and then play the two scenarios. The, build our two <laughs> decks each. Yes. Yeah. Did you guys play on tabletop or did you yeah. play like remote? Tabletop. Play? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Tabletop simulator. I should yes. correct. Table, correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I um, <laughs> it was funny to fall asleep during the uh, the waking nightmares. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the first one went really well. The dreamland, like the dreaming part. That one went decent. Mm-hmm. That one's so fun. I that love one's that scenario. Yeah. Because I think we got every single location. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice. Yep, we got all 12. We, who are we playing? I can't even remember now. Let me... <laughs> oh, God. Look at my campaign log. <laughs> God, I swear to God I wasn't, like, plastered that night, but now I'm feeling like I was. Um, I think maybe we just need to move the bar for that you consider uh, plastered at so just I, a little lower. I was playing Mandy. Dream Mandy. Yes, okay. Dream Mandy. I had Dream Tony. And I had Woke Leo. And I had uh, Woke Kluver Diana. Yeah. So basically, one of us was a Kluver, the other one was a killer, and then we switched right. roles per. Yeah. Nice. Well, and Leo and Diana kind of went slightly more flexy because that's just how yeah. they go. But mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the uh, Waking we need, Nightmare. We need to pick is, that back up. We do. Waking Nightmare is not going well. <laughs> we stopped halfway through and we're like. <laughs> Oh man, this is going poorly. We should go to bed. <laughs> so, I think we should save this and go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes to that, sir. Uh, okay. Call. So let's move on from there. Just a couple of reminders for you all. Uh, check out our merch store at mythosmerch.com. We've had some really good feedback from the stuff we have out there. The hoodie's really popular. I own one. I love it. Hopefully, mm-hmm. you will too. Um, and you know it's that time of year for a beanie i am using my toque like every day so <laughs> i was waiting for something uh so check that out at mythosmerch.com and you know what if anyone cares to take a picture of themselves and like tag mythos merch and tag us like it would nothing would please me more than to see someone else wearing our logo so involve us please and then as well <laughs> check out our uh our page patreon update uh we have a blog post about that on our website at mythosbusters.com we've got our new 15 dollars tier out there and a couple of other uh enhancements slash adjustments i'm stealing myself for my arkham themed tattoo i've been in i've been in tentative contact with my favorite tattoo artist oh god uh, really uh uh (laughs) uh-huh wow (laughs) yeah well i mean starting the planning it's looking like it's gonna happen (laughs) <laughs> so uh, if you want to make that happen, we'll take video, we'll take pictures, we'll make a whole thing of it. Uh, go ahead and uh, check us out on patreon.com slash mythosbusters. All right. So moving on from there, we want to move to our Blackest Friday contest. So first we want to thank uh, Vase, in- Vase... Oh my God, I'm going to do this. Vase Innkeeper right. Odin. Vase Odin, Vase Odin Innkeeper. What, what order does he put those Vase in? Innkeeper Odin. I had it right. Okay. But it's Vase Odin is, is what he goes Va- by. Va- Okay. He's the innkeeper. Yes. Thanks yes. to the innkeeper over at the Twisted Tentacle Inn yes. for, for putting this together. He does a great job coordinating, uh, doing various contests and supplying prizes for different content uh, contributors across the community. Uh, so huge thanks, uh, Vase, for, for actually throwing this together because, you know, we do our own contests, but sometimes it's just we don't have it in us. So kind of making this a big thing is really cool. And definitely go check out the hashtag Blackest Friday 2019. Um, and check out the Twisted Tentacle Inn for kind of the central announcement and where you can find the other contests and entries. And it's it's just a really fun little coming together of the community. So go check mm-hmm. that out. Super generous uh, on his point and his part too. Like yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. A lot of prizes the, given out. <laughs> it's a horde. Yeah. And the one we get to give away, if, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, is an entire cycle of the Circle Undone. Is that accurate? I like, think that's what we said last Ian, time. Who's so. not here? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe that one person correct. keeping track. Yeah. Um, okay, so we asked last time for you guys to write your best Arkham themed haiku, and holy cow, guys, our our Gmail inbox was a flood. It was mm-hmm. really fun to watch them just like trickle in three, four, five a day sometimes for the past couple weeks. Um, so thank you to everyone who took the time to do it. These were a, uh, uh, just a blast to read through. Um, though unfortunately since participation was so good we're not going to get to all of them on the air <laughs> oh, so, no. yeah. there was like 70 of them yes there was so <laughs> there was insane. so many 75 um, maybe like there was a lot so what we've done is we each took a block of them and kind of picked out our general favorites um so sorry if yours doesn't get read we again really appreciate everyone entering and uh we're gonna make a uh an article out on our website of all of the entries so everyone can go out and read them because these are a lot of fun but, uh, so we're going to read through some of our favorites here. So I'll go ahead and get us started. So, Are we going to alternate since we yes. have close to the same number? Okay, yes. cool. 
Um, and and I suppose I don't. Do I, should I explain what a haiku is? Is that condescending? Everyone knows it's what a, a haiku five is, syllable, right? seven syllable, five syllable. There you go. Yes, Minil- minimalist poem format. Yes. All right. So my first one. It all rests on this. Anything but auto fail. Why would you say that? <laughs> Encapsulates it perfectly. Now, Are you we, saying who they're by or no? Oh yeah, um, sure. Or... Sure, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one was by uh, Josh M. So thanks, Josh. I got one from Pedantic Pangolin. Uh, endlessly searching through the dark or through dark fates, but could you just pick a damn token? <laughs> <laughs> People who swirl the bag too long. I understand. <laughs> uh, uh, guilty. Guilty. Yep. <laughs> I don't swirl the bag too long, but I like in RPGs, I do roll my dice too. Like I, I shake them in my hand too much. Mm. Um, mm. All right. Anyway, uh, I have <laughs> one from. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say thanks, Casey, for that uh, that clarification. He said technically it's only condescending if you're patronizing. Or patronizing. <laughs> patronizing. Patronizing is. Patronizing. Buying yeah. Things. Yep. yeah. Very different. Um, okay. I have one from Steve Tiscos. Pulling tentacles is akin to getting kicked in the testicles. <laughs> I like the slant rhyme on that. I like how mm-hmm. it flows. I like how it mm-hmm. flows. <laughs> All right. We got one from Aaron. Twilight Gathering. Tactical horror action. What's an Azathoth? <laughs> Good. Uh, from Rob C. Dark streets contorted. Unseen horrors approaching. Why'd I pick Lola? <laughs> <laughs> I, there were a couple of Lola ones in my in my mm-hmm, selection as mm-hmm. well. It was funny. Um, my next one's also from Steve Tiscos. What could be gnawing at my scrotum? None other than Brown Jenkin. Okay. And one Brown Jenkin. One Brown Jenkin. One Brown Jenkin. <laughs> gnawing at your scrotum. Hmm. Uh, uh, so Chris Watt played to his audience correctly. Um, who wants the mystic? Sean will fight it for you, bro. Diana is Bay. Oh, God. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, you played right yeah. right into my wheelhouse, and I will re- thusly reward you for it. Tim Mason wrote, I love you, Lola. Strong, efficient, consistent, ally, not gator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, <great>. oh. <laughs> that's good. That one had me. <laughs> the painful, yeah. but good. Yeah. Um, this one I love. It's from Michael Jones. I love this because I've been on the receiving end of this, and I've also been the giver of this. So, <laughs> giggity. Should I engage first? <laughs> one in sixteen chance you're hit. I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Oh. All right, this one's from Ryan. Uh, this this one this one I feel it really encapsulates like the the first Arkham Horror experience. My study door gone. Pulse quickens. What was that sound? Adventure blossoms. I like that. Yeah. Okay. That I mean that's, that's like a legit haiku. That's yeah. that's that adheres to the format very as well. Suppose all these fake ones that we have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not uh, I'm not patronizing anyone. Doug. We know. Bramp Shaw. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, I like this one because it's Carcosa related. It's it's more of a serious one. Um, peek behind the mask. The truth I've known all along. Now I play my part. Mm, nice. Mm. If you get That's that, solid. what's it, if you don't get enough doubt or conviction, you get things like, oh my god, it was me all along. <laughs> <laughs> um, my last one that I picked is from David Co. Five auto fails drawn. I'm seven up on this test. Now six. I give up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel. I just feel the pain. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shared experience. Uh, so my last one comes from Julia. Digging up an ancient city, finding the print of a tennis shoe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still have five more. <laughs> no, no, four more, four more. 
<laughs> well, rapid Here. fire, baby. All right. So, Sergey Popov, the final token. The tentacle says no way. Blob gets everyone. Uh, Eve, oh, I'm not pronouncing that last name. Wijins. Uh, <laughs> I'm not doing it, and yeah, then I do it. Yeah. Do you hear the call? Whispering from all around. Madness awaits you. <laughs> um, and then, so I saved my favorite two for last. Um, oh, and I can't choose which one's my favorite. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, Ian Barr, or Lane Barr? I, 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 anyway, you know who you are. In Dunwich they dwell. Let all the broods hear me yell. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> that one rhymed. And then finally, Chad Reverman. Oh, man. Deny existence. <laughs> Everything can fuck right off. I don't even care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that one. That one. Was... <laughs> That's the Diana experience right there. Yep. That's just the mystic, like... I I don't want to play this part of the game. Go away. <laughs> like you can fuck right yeah. off. Can, can you fucking not game? Yeah. All right. All right. Excellent. Um. So that's everyone. So I I had five. Scott, how many did you have? Nine. Uh, I'll count. But about that. Scott or er, Nick, how many did you have? I had four. Cat. I had eight. You had eight, so that puts us at seventeen. Someone roll a d twenty. I was gonna say Scott has his. Got it. Got it. One sec. I got the giant one. I should make room. Dice tower. Okay. Three. That didn't even go down the dice tower. Oh, I, I don't have the dice tower here. And it's it's, oh. it's a giant d twenty. If that helps. Uh, it three does. is Chris Watt who wins for his haiku about me, so I'm cool with it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Thanks, it's Chris. Next. <laughs> you roll the damn die. So thank you to everyone who entered, and like I said, we'll be putting an article up on our website. So if you want to see these haiku and more, and there are so many more, and mm-hmm. a lot of them are good. That we didn't just pick the best ones; we just picked our favorites. Are we uh, doing the um, the bonus prizes? Oh yeah, let's do the bonus prizes. Okay, let's get a couple more rolls in there. So, uh, so Chris is going to get the full a copy of the full cycle of TCU. So Chris, please. Uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll email you. And if you haven't gotten a message from us, go ahead and bug us. That's totally fine. We'll we'll hook you up there. And then what else are we giving away, guys? Uh, we have four copies of Hotel Excelsior. Uh-huh. Excelsior Hotel. Uh-huh. Which I've heard yeah. is not available everywhere yet. It is not. Really? There are people who have yet to have, to have it. Yeah. I think North America's got it, but um, I think Europe. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know Canada's light, but... Shall I just roll four more? Do we have four copies to give away? Yeah. Okay. Then. I have two. And I have one and Ian has one. That's four. All right. Here we go. 19. Oh, that, we, <laughs> that's too that high. Redo. Invalid. 18. Also invalid. Reroll. <laughs> just Fif- rolling 15. No, no. Okay. Uh, that's one of mine, I think. So, Sean, you had how many? Five. Five. And then eight is that's thirteen. So my second one. No, it'd be my second one, right? Oh, I was going in order. Oh, yeah, top yeah, yeah. down. Yep. So that would be Steve Tiscos. Phew! Congrats. Steve. All right. Thank you for entering. Next one. Oh, roll fifteen again. Doesn't count. No. Nope. Eighteen. Oh my god, this is the worst. Fourteen. Fourteen. I didn't know he was using his low to die. That's your last one. Oh, my last one. Or no, that'd be my first one, which yeah. would be Steve Tisco's Who Already Won, so re Oh, goodness, okay. <laughs> this is a load of die. Holy moly, I wish I was role-playing. <laughs> 16. I just rolled 19, oh, 18, 18. <laughs> that would be Michael Jones. Okay, so that is two hotels so far? Yes, we okay. have two rolls left. Nine. Um, that would be your fourth one. Scott. Okay, that is one, two. Ian Barr with the In Dunwich They Dwell. Nice. Excellent. And last one. Three. Oh, that was the one that won the big one. Mm -hmm. Twelve. 
God, this die. Oh, I'm going to use this die next time I play. That's <laughs> like, that's your your you're second never to last hit a one. Double Scott. digit number. My in that second game. to <laughs> last one. That's uh, Sergey Popov. Nice, excellent. All right. Well, thanks to everyone who entered again, and uh, congratulations to everyone who won. We're going to do our best to reach out to you, but if you have not heard from us, feel free to bug us because the prize is yours. Uh, Sometimes we just need a little bit of prodding. All right, and again, big thanks to the Twisted Tentacle Inn for facilitating this. It's a really fun contest, so we're happy to participate. And definitely go check out the other uh, content producers who are participating in Blackest Friday because they ran some really fun challenges too. Okay, uh, so moving on from there, uh, we'll just do a quick patron uh, patron roundup. Uh, thanks, as always, to our board members um, who are actually in the process of a quick change. So <gasps> I'm not gonna name you this episode because mm. I'm pretty sure this list isn't updated yet. And uh, I apologize. I, th- I for think that. it is updated. Is it? it it's updated. <gasps> hi, Ian. Hi, Ian. <laughs> hi. Hey, Ian, hopefully wanna, I sound okay. You want to run, run us through the patron news? <laughs> sure, if I can pull up the show notes. <laughs> Give me one second. It's always a plus. It, it's been a night. Uh, hold, please. I'm glad you've wrangled your internet. Well, we'll see. For now. If I can avoid sounding like a robot. Now, really as long as your audacity is robot. Yeah. yeah, as long as your audacity is picking you up fine, no one else will know. Except for everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as we can communicate is the real baseline. I think, yeah. But... <laughs> uh okay i think i have myself i'll just switch my mental ignore filter from nick to ian for this episode <laughs> <laughs> yay mental oh hi nick. scott will answer my questions yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> don't get used to it nick you're on this episode uh, oh <laughs> uh okay so i got it now okay so a uh, bit of a, a board member um shake up so <laughs> thanks to our uh longtime board members chris b chris h chris u ian kyle philip dave abilio nathan chad and robert and we do have two new board members to announce and that is uh morton and jared are our two new board members so thanks so much for immediately um filling those vacancies and uh enjoy your heated making seats. sure we have our lucky number 13 maintained Excellent. And a special shout out to our random patron this time around. And I think he just won a prize actually too, is Michael Jones. So (laughs) everything's coming up, Michael. (laughs) Michael Jones, Michael Jones, calling Michael Jones. No? Aqua? No one? Uh, Okay. Yep. No, I was with you. Okay. Thanks. I didn't didn't like it, but I was with you. That's fine. You were unhappy about it, but, uh, <laughs> and, uh, we do have a new brand new position in the mythos busters offices, and this is going to, uh, one of our employees, Mark Zine, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Mark Zine, um, is going to fulfill the role of Tommy's personal motorcycle mechanic. That is an important job. Now, does that mean he doesn't actually do any work because it doesn't exist? Or... Oh, <laughs> it should exist. I though. I approve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy in the corner of the shop, just hat over his eyes, snoozing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that, that's okay. <laughs> not quite ready yet. You see, you need new brakes too, and <laughs> it's an easy gig. They've been saying this thing's going to be delivered for like three months, and it's yet to show up. So. <sighs> oh. Excellent. Uh, so we're going to skip community highlights this episode. So we've got other things to discuss. Uh, chief among them, some fun news that we got. Um, Ian, hate to double hit you again as you enter the episode. Um, <laughs> if you're ready for news, go for it. Otherwise, Scott was ready on. Uh, Nick was ready on. That, yeah, I, I can cover it if you want, Ian. Um, I think I got it as long as my internet is loading. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, um, okay so... Well, last time around, we talked about the kind of scrambled message that FFG posted and people were speculating that maybe Barkham Horror was actually a real product. And guess what? It is (laughs) because (laughs) we got the announcement of a brand new standalone scenario. Uh, Although people kind of saw this coming based on that coded message, we didn't know what exactly that looked like. And uh, so they announced Barkham Horror, the meddling of Mialathotep. 
and <laughs> this is going to be a standalone scenario pack. My favorite part of this is right in like the first couple paragraphs of the marketing announcement article. We're proud to announce Barkham Horror, the meddling of Mad Lothotep. A 100% real playable <laughs> set. Like, we promise, guys. We promise. They really had to specify. Yeah, and like the little subtitle they have under the articles uh, <laughs> for this one, it just says, yep, it's real. <laughs> so really trying to emphasize that. But yeah, it's actually real. Uh, but this is a little bit different than regular standalones because it comes with player cards. Um, and it's also kind of a true standalone in that you can't uh insert it into one of your regular campaigns unless you want to um completely break the rules which is fine with me um because this comes with uh a set of kind of dog themed i I guess i should back up and say what barkham horror is is it's basically like an alternate universe where dogs are kind of carrying out the investigations in arkham and so the standalone cards were getting five new investigator cards for kind of these dog versions of uh, characters we know in the Arkhamverse. And it looks like they didn't specify in the article, but based on the card fan, there's like a dog monocle and a spiked collar. So it looks like we're also getting uh, just random dog theme player cards too. Um, mm-hmm. But all this stuff can only be used in Barkham Horror, the standalone scenario. But, but I mean, come on, we all know we're going to play with these <laughs> investigators at regular Arkham, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. I do love how the article even acknowledges, like, hey, these are ma- not meant to be you know, siphoned into the human world nor the humans into this world, but we know you're going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, good Which luck trying totally to stop will. us. <laughs> so we did get two of the... Uh, we can kind of see who all of them are going to be, We get, but we got two of the dog investigators. I need to think of a clever term for these. Dog gators? Uh, Investidagos? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got two of them spoiled, so the first one is red. So, Scott, why don't you read Duke? Yes! Uh, <laughs> so, Duke, subtitled The Good Boy, uh, <laughs> is a survivor investigator uh he has two willpower four intellect four combat and two agility uh he's a drifter and you begin the game with friendly human in play uh (laughs) two actions you beg for more treats place three treats on friendly human so we don't know what treats does because we don't have the friendly human card but i can only imagine uh elder elder sign effect is plus two place one treat on friendly human after this test ends ready him so I assume he'll be rend- <laughs> exhausting the friendly human like Duke. Uh, and he has five health, six sanity. Seems seems, seems good. fun. I mean, <laughs> Duke is the investigator. Uh, Ash can yeah, he's the really that, the so. investigator now. We yeah. can stop joking about it. It's no longer a joke, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I like how he has the four intellect and four combat. Yep. So he's yep. kind of like the perfect, perfect counterpart to the Ash can <laughs> investigator. <laughs> Yeah, that one's yeah. kind of hard to judge until we see the friendly human, <laughs> yeah. which will be... I like it's how it's like friendly we have human, no though, on that Ash can. <laughs> yep, yep. And instead of calling him Ash can, it's friendly human. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, the other spoiled investigator um, might be one of my new favorite gators in general. <laughs> this is uh, Skids O'Drool, the pound escapee, with two will, three intellect, three combat, four... Uh, agility so the familiar skids stat line criminal traded action spend one resource move you give a human puppy dog eyes until they give you a car ride (laughs) move up to three times ignoring enemy engagement that is so freaking bonkers (laughs) limit (laughs) once per round elder sign effect plus two deal one damage to the next enemy whose location you enter this round and eight health and six sanity Uh, is that were actually skids ability right yeah yeah so this is uh automatically making the real skids look bad (laughs) he'd be playable (laughs) yeah it's a sweet ability and his signature is the best thing i've seen in arkham horror for a really long time (laughs) yep (laughs) i agree why don't you read it sean since you brought it up (laughs) okay so uh his signature is take the wheel (laughs) It's a two-cost event. It has a combat, agility, and wild icon. Skidzo Drool deck only. Fast. Play only during your turn. 
For the remainder of your turn, whenever you enter a location, deal three damage to an enemy at that location. And the oh, art God. the art is of a dog <laughs> driving a Model A. And the traits, the traits are the best part. The mm-hmm. traits are, are separate s- sentences here. What? No. Stop. That's bad. Bad dog. Traits. <laughs> Does this remind anybody of that meme of the dog flying the airplane? Like, I am the captain now. Yeah. Hi, I'm the captain. Just kidding, I'm a dog. I don't know what I'm doing. We're all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> then I love how the cat, the, the car in the background, it looks yes. like there's a cat leaning out with a Tommy gun. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, it's man. so good. But, take the wheel is like, oh, it just shits all over on the lamb. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it really, really does. <laughs> yeah. it, it's uh, this. This is so fun because one of my favorite uh, investigators in Arkham Third Edition is uh, Michael McGlenn because he has the car you can like run over people, and that's basically mm. this. And, the, uh, and, and so Nick, good. you had mentioned that now uh, our and fine clothes promo we got that his we weakness made. as well. Yes. Has, has a place to fit because so it, <laughs> it was the dog. It's no longer anachronistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It's legit. Mm-hmm. Are we going to talk about Skids's? Uh, yeah, read it. And his weakness. Mm-hmm. Um, so Skids O'Drool's signature weakness is dog catchers. Uh, it's an enemy weakness. It's two fight, three health, three agility, or three of eight. Excuse me. Um, humanoid traded prey. Skids O'Drool hunter forced. After you enter Dog Catcher's location or Dog Catcher's enters your location, you cannot move for the remainder of the round. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And that hits everyone, too. Mm-hmm. That's the crazy thing. Because you're all dogs and they're dog catchers. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. God, this set's Another... amazing. So there's a few more, like, you can see little things if you yeah. zoom in. Um, Bark Harrigan. Uh, I'll try and read the text, but you have two additional pause slots, which can only be something to hold a weapon asset. Yeah, used. That's right. You heard me. Don't ask how. (laughs) (laughs) I love all the extra, like, rule slash flavor text on these Mm -hmm. cards. I just... I have to say I really appreciate how much FFG actually is letting itself have fun with this IP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't believe they did this because they. I can't remember them ever doing like a quote unquote joke product for any of mm-hmm. their games. Like other game companies have, but I've never seen FFG do one. And it was brilliant because if you're into Arkham Horror and this thing is like $20 or less, like, why would you not buy it? Even if you're mm-hmm. not that excited, yeah. it's just like, I just want to support them doing fun things. And, it's, yeah. and it is for a charity as well. It's uh, mm, pet, that's right. pet, Pets for Vets. That's yeah. Which is, I believe, it's like a therapy dogs for veterans. I think that sounds right. We did our research. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I yeah. also want to. I also want to point out dog monocle. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> which is a two cost seeker asset. Has an intellect icon. Has the item tool and classy traits. <laughs> <laughs> Barkham deck you need only. Classy trait support. <laughs> yeah. Um, you get plus one intellect while investigating, and I'm going to guess plus one skill value during a parlay action, because mm-hmm. honestly, look at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the, tr- the treachery squirrel, it's squirrel, and it's traded squirrel, and then I assume revelation, it's a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh my god. Man. I'm so excited for this expansion, guys. It's, yeah. it's so silly, and I'm going to look forward to reading every single word that's printed on it. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, <laughs> that's, that's the one I'm most excited about. It's just like getting it out and just reading it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And now we have to have at least one game at Arkham Knights where we're just playing all the <laughs> I, uh, gators. <laughs> Iron Pup 2020. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I I love how the fine clothes we made will fit right in. Mm. Yeah, the, uh, the special fine clothes all art we made for Gen Con. Um, Matt would like to clarify: Pets for Vets is a service that finds forever homes for pets to veterans. 
Mm. So the, the money goes to them. So awesome on FFG making a, yes. like you said, quote unquote joke set uh, when the community's like, we want this. Um, and also putting money towards charity like that. Like, that's awesome. So. And if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. this all spawned from uh, just okay. So Barkham Horror, there's no that, that release date at the, mentioned the yet. So maybe in a few oh, months. Just someone having mark. fun. Just someone having mm-hmm. fun with a little bit of uh, playful design. And it just kind of next bit of went news away from there. was the and, uh, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. I, I like that process. <laughs> yeah, it says our graphic designer Chelsea was morphing them, and they thought, "Oh, it'd be fun, like Ark or April Fool's thing," and we thought it was all. We thought that was all the project was. A fun piece for one day. How wrong we were. <laughs> it's like, the response from you, our fans, you asked, nay, demanded that we make this product. <laughs> oh, I yeah. really hope this sells well because it's really cool this one has a really tight theme, but I would love to see just kind of more silliness in Arkham from time to time. It doesn't have to be like a regular thing. It'll get old yeah. and trite if it's regular, but you know, another joke set with another theme could be really fun. Yeah, just a standalone here and there. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, yeah, and Matt, Matt's going to share the original Barkham investigators who were drawn by Kathleen Miller at Asthma Day North America. Um, that that was what I was referring to. She brought those to Tentacale time two years ago? Yeah, that's right. And that's that's where I originally remember seeing it. Mm-hmm. So, like, just the fact that we started there and it's, it's, it's a product that's going to be on shelves for people to buy. That's really cool. <laughs> so good. All right, what other news hath we? Uh, the next is a preview article for the fifth Mythos pack, which is the last scenario of the sleeping campaign, I believe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's how it works, right? Sounds yeah, right. then the, the sixth pack <laughs> will be the woke one. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> that's confusing to think about. Where the gods dwell. Um so where the gods dwell uh there's some really cool uh scenario cards in here that i don't want to read because they're spoiler (laughs) but there is one that i was just like this one i have so many questions i don't know how spoiler we we want to be but i think we normally don't cover any of the scenario related stuff too heavily so i i think we should probably Okay. probably skip that yeah if for me if for it for me if for no one else because i kind of enjoy seeing things for the first time when i put them on the table okay sounds good uh we do have some player cards that were shown though um sean you'll have to break your rule in this case would you like <clears throat> to read uh summon hound wait what's my rule uh, not seeing stuff to put on the table, I guess. Oh, no, no. I, I meant uh, encounter stuff, but that's totally fine. Yeah, okay. Summoned Hound is a level one mystic asset. It's three cost. It has an intellect and combat icons. It has the ally and summon traits. As an additional cost to play Summoned Hound, you must search your bonded cards for one copy of Unbound Beast and shuffle it into your deck. And then fast action... During your turn, except during an action. I like that. Mm-hmm. Exhaust, works. summon hound, fight, or investigate. Either attack with a base combat skill of five or investigate with a base uh, intellect skill of five. And then this thing has three health and takes up an ally slot and an arcane slot. Hmm. Ooh, there is a lot going on there. Oh, there's a lot going on there. Okay. So, first of all, big thing. Takes up two slots. Yep. And they're different. So it's like Mystic Flamethrower. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Or, like, um, Enchanted Blade. Yes. Yeah, there. Perfect. Um, It gives you a bonus action, but it's fast. Mm Mm-hmm. The no attacks of opportunity, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Base uh, skill of five costs one experience and is, three resources, so it's not it's not costing you it's not asking a lot from you other than those slots. Like that's going to be the biggest drawback. Well, that in the enemy, the, yeah, the bonded I, card, yeah. Which okay, so Nick, you want to read the bonded card just so we can sure talk them together. So unbound beast is a weakness. Three fight, 
three health, three evade, monster, extra dimensional, and Tindalos traded. Um, uh, bonded, summoned hound, prey, bearer, hunter, and retaliate. And its game text reads, Revelation, if there is no copy of summoned hound in play, set unbound beast aside out of play. Otherwise, set an investigator's summoned hound aside out of play and spawn unbound beast engaged with the same investigator. So, okay. So when he when wait, you wait, draw wait. him, he yeah. takes your summon hound, kicks it out of the game, and mm -hmm. the unbound beast comes in. If you I was just thinking about the how it's worded. It's a little weird, but I guess I suppose that's to like get around if you were to um, somehow get summoned hound to a different investigator. I don't know how you could do that, but teamwork. it's just worded. Uh, you could teamwork, kind of. Not yeah, no, that's yeah, items, isn't it? Uh, or allies. You can't teamwork allies. I'm pretty sure yep, you can. It's, it's resources, items, and allies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then there you go. Yeah. Uh, or chance encounter. Yeah, so now here's my question. Uh, if two players have summon hounds, this says, uh, otherwise, set an investigator's summon hound aside. <laughs> out of play. <laughs> What's the tiebreaker? I, well, I mean, I would assume... So you draw you know, yours and you're like, sorry... <laughs> we're gonna get rid of you yeah, like, know, you're playing Diana, you're like, we're gonna get rid of Marie's summon down. Yeah, I suppose technically whoever draws this chooses, right? Mm. I would guess so. Like if it comes to blows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh and the so what interesting thing too is like let's say your summon hound dies from combat damage or whatever. Unbound beast still stays in your deck. Yeah. And then you oh, draw yeah, it. There's nothing that yoinks it out. Yeah, so you nope. draw it, but then if you don't have a summon hound, it just goes away, but it takes that draw away from you as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, that's that's harsh. If mm -hmm. you're including summon hound, chances are one of the things you want it for is to help you fight things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a 333 <laughs> enemy is not, like, crazy imposing, but if you need help fighting things, that's <laughs> yeah. just not nothing. Especially with retaliate. Mm -hmm. Huh. I'll be I... very interested. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like when I use Summon Hound, it'll probably be for investigating, I would think. Hmm. More so, because like for combat, you probably want to have something that does more damage. But just investigating yeah. one at a time seems to be acceptable. Do you know what I mean? Instead of just mm -hmm. punching one at a time. Yep. Agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe maybe that's its use. More often is going to be for investigating. Um. I did see someone mention online about kind of abusing the Hound, where if you're playing with Diana, uh, you can put two copies of Inspiring Presence in. Oh. So you summon Hound, <laughs> use, use, so play Summon Hound, fast action, do whatever, put Inspiring Presence, he readies, Inspiring Presence again, or uh, to do a thing, so you can use him three times at fast. And then teamwork him to Yorick, who would also have <laughs> inspiring presence. <laughs> and then teamwork him to Ashcan, who could then discard cards to ready, like use inspiring presence and discard a card to ready. And yeah, so like someone's talking <laughs> about you, you could get thirteen clues in one turn on the first turn <laughs> if you drew Provided perfect. Everyone but has the right cards at the right time. Just from Summon Hound, which I thought was really funny, but <laughs> That's awesome. I mm, my I don't know what your guys' instinct to this guy is. My instinct is, ooh man, that weakness is harsh for what this gives mm -hmm. you. They're like the ally's really good. Yep. Yeah. But the weakness Agreed. seems harsh for what it gives you. I'll be interested to see after playing it if I feel the same. To me, but I think it would ha it would have to be harsh though because you shuffle it into your deck so you're not even guaranteed to see it necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, except so it has to be impactful. Except for we all know weaknesses are the lightest cards in the deck, so yeah, they float absolutely. to the top. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can confirm. The other thing is, it's kind of like uh, a Leo uh, Mississippi Manatee Leo. Uh, it kind of gives you a fourth action, mm -hmm. kind of as long as but, it's a fighter investigate action. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and it does give you the boost, which is which is nice. Uh, oh shit! Five... Agnes could run this with mm -hmm. uh, brute strength mm -hmm. and, sw and swing at eight. And able bodied. <laughs> and able -bodied. Wait, so this so this fight is a basic fight action? Oh no, it's not, isn't it? 
No, it's not. It's totally not. No, yeah, no, it's not. That's my bad. Okay. No. Whoopsies. Okay, I was non-bow. confused there. Non-bow. That doesn't work. The other thing is it takes up two pretty important slots for Mystics. Yes. Because yes. it takes up, like, your Arcane slots are always crammed, right? Like, you're always mm-hmm. juggling spells in and out. And there's so many crazy Mystic allies. Like, this is... I want to say these are the top two slots for Mystics. Although, when we were talking oh, before, easily. Stokes well, said maybe accessory. But... No, nah, I think allies the top slot for everybody, honestly. And then the, your other one is going to vary. But yeah, I yeah. would say that these are the top two for Mystic, hands down. Mm-hmm. I would tend to agree. And so then is this is this worth those two slots? I think that's, what's, that's what narrows this card's focus, yeah. more so than the weakness. Yeah. What's interesting, too, is Unbound Beast, if it comes out... Oh, no, I was thinking of something else. Never mind. I was like, if Unbound Beast comes out, and then you, after that you get rid of Summon Hound, but Unbound Beast itself mm, gets rid nope. of Summon Hound. Yeah. Once it's in play, it's out. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that is kind of rough. That's you gross. can't, like, tank your Summoned Hound, and then... Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It's almost like you'd have nothing left to lose. <laughs> yeah, almost. Nothing left to right, lose on. is a uh, <laughs> Survivor event. <laughs> Flashed in the AV club there for a second. Yeah, uh, level three zero cost event uh, has a wild icon. It's spirit traded. It says if you have fewer than five resources, gain resources until you have five resources. If you have fewer than five cards in your hand, draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. Remove nothing left to lose from the game. Specifically, not exile. I'll point that out, but just mm. remove from the game. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Also, this art is. Fucking baller. Oh my god. It's so good. <laughs> so this is like um Madame LeBron on steroids, essentially. Right? <laughs> Madame LeBron. <laughs> to me it's like any any player who can take this can become Patrice slash Preston for a turn. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like <laughs> kinda, yeah. One turn yeah. and one turn only. I you know, I really like this in a Dark Horse build because being able to burst mm-hmm. up in resources when you need them is And nice. cards. <laughs> and and cards. Yeah. I'll be interested to see if we get more things in Survivor that play around with having no cards in hand. We've got mm-hmm. is, uh, like Dark Cow skill. or something. What? Yeah, what is the skill called? Noth- oh, nothing um, to lose. No, that's this card, John. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, <laughs> literally the card in front of you. Last chance. Last chance. That is correct. Last chance. Where she's that's looking into the revolver, the right, and it's got yep. one bullet loading left. Loading the yeah. gun. Yep. Yep. Mainstay in Patrice for me. <laughs> that it's card. a great card in Patrice. Yeah. Yeah. Oddly enough, as awesome as this art is of Patrice, I think I don't take this in Patrice, but I take it in every mm-hmm. other player that can take this. <laughs> like it's, I would tend to agree. Because uh, yeah. this takes an action, and Patrice is just going to get rid of those cards that you just drew. Right. And the resources, I mean, so you might gain five, or you could spend that three resources on an emergency cash level three and gain four guaranteed, not capping at five, right? right. Like, mm-hmm. even if you have five resources, you can then gain four, plus it could recharge some of your stuff if you're playing a more asset-heavy Patrice. Or even at a lesser cost, you could take two and then draw another card for all your card-feeding abilities. Uh, yeah, no, I, exactly. I, I think I agree. Yeah. But despite the fact that this is Patrice-centered and Patrice-flavored, I yeah. don't think Patrice takes it. <laughs> no, right. I really don't. But everyone else does, because this card <laughs> yeah. is amazing. <laughs> Um, someone was talking about if um, Preston using uh, what's the one where they're taking the box out of the truck and you can play a card from someone else's hand you owe me one you owe me one he you owe me ones this card and then if you have fewer than five resources gain resources until you have five resources he would be putting them all on family inheritance Mm -hmm. and it would create an infinite loop that you would never end (laughs) and the game would just break because you you couldn't choose to end it because it's not a loop that you're ending. Yeah. You just, just keep adding resources infinitely, and then when you run out of resource tokens, you make your friends get resource tokens mm-hmm. and you add them there. And then, and then you, you have to pause the game until you, yeah, you have to pause the game until you can buy more resource tokens. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, sorry guys, I have no way to end this. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. So going back to Patrice, do you think you use this to fill her hand to then get skill icons for an important test, or is that kind of a waste? I think that's the best argument for sure. Okay. Though I don't... 
I hesitate to think that in three actions, if you've built your skill spread well, that she's going to need very often to fill her hand back up. Hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's been my experience, at least. There's, there's very sure. few times, unless it's a really rough turn, where I'm like, oh, God, I need more cards. Mm-hmm. But definitely okay. the best argument for it in Patrice. And right? I haven't played her yet, so I wasn't too sure. Mm. Mm. You'll enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, Thoth points out in the chat, he's like, everyone is interested in action gain five bucks. It is if you're broke. If you have four bucks, it's action gain a resource. So yeah. that that's where in Patrice, I'm not a fan of it. Mm. So you know, I really don't mind this in a deck that pulled uh, <laughs> indebted. Yeah, mm, because just like sure. straight out of the gate. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're not playing this action one, but you can still spend Probably. down what you have and then mm -hmm. turn back up. So I don't know. It's a really cool card. Yeah, it's gonna make it really into fun. decks. It'll it'll get played. Yep. All right. Is that the last bit of news? I believe it that's is, it for it news. <laughs> oh, God. Then here we go. Here we go, guys. Ian, are you oh, back with us? I'm back. <laughs> yes. All right. Take it away on <laughs> Take it away on the Chaos decks. <laughs> okay. So just as kind of a quick refresher, um, last time around, we mentioned the uh, holiday challenge that was thrown out by Old School Gamer. Um, and the challenge was for everyone to uh, build a random chaos deck for an investigator and then take that investigator through a uh, one campaign. Um, not necessarily any set campaign, but a campaign of your choice. So we put out a survey um, and we basically put our fate in the community's hands for them to pick what investigator... Um, we're each going to use for this chaos challenge. Uh, I did pull a little uh, cheeky fast one and left Lola off the survey. Because <laughs> I just couldn't handle that, that, the, the thought of getting Lola. No and one can, no one wanted to think those thoughts. I, I just figured too, that like it would end everyone would just end up voting Lola for all of us. <laughs> it wouldn't be that interesting. So anyway, hey, Ian, I'm yes. just going to go on a limb here, and I have not looked at the results, but sure. based on how people were commenting, and my history with a certain investigator, I promise I will live stream myself eating a prairie <laughs> oyster if my investigator is not Skids. <laughs> sure. Because I'm pretty Sox sure it testy? is. Uh, I would say, so... A, a bull testicle. What's a prairie... Oh, okay. Yeah. A bull testicle, okay. Yeah. We call those Rocky Mountain oysters. Yeah. 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 Here they're prairie oysters, but hmm. anyways. That actually makes more sense because we don't keep our bulls in the Rocky, the Rocky Mountains. Mountains. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, before we reveal the, re reveal the results, um, should we mutually decide on a campaign we're all going to play or just leave it up to fate and we'll play whatever we feel like playing? What do you guys think? Scott, are we going to TNA this shit? And anyone else who can make it? Yeah. I was going to say, we should definitely try and do all four of us, if that's the case. Oh, I think yeah, because that, that, that happens so often. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd have to intermingle it in between our Skids and Daisy one. We so, haven't even started that. So. I know. Easy. Yeah, yeah, easy. Um, sure. I think we should stream it. Okay, now, like, okay even I if I take this I on as a solo series, I will stream it, and it'll be awful. How about, Agreed. I'll do the same. <laughs> how about... Uh, we do, um, oh god, what's it called? Night of the Zealot, but we take them through five standalones as well in there. So it's an eight oh my campaign. God. Oh my god. Oh, globetrotting zealot. Hard pass. Hard no? pass. No? Okay. 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 I like okay. Night of the Zealot. I like, I like how Scott... Night of I the like Zealot... How Scott... uh, sorry, go ahead, Nick. I was just saying, I like how Scott puts it forth as an option, and Sean says hard pass, and Scott says nope. Like, <laughs> this isn't an option anymore. This is what we're doing. How about this? How about this? Night of the Zealot with one choice side quest. For, for scenario campaign, let's not inflict eight scenarios of pain on ourselves. Okay, that's fine. I, okay, I will, I'm fine with yeah, that. Yeah, this works for me. Okay, Night of the Zealot plus one. Oh, you <laughs> okay. know what Matt says? Wait until 4A comes out and marathon a dream quest. 
I was thinking that. I was thinking that we do two and two, and two of us are the dreamers, <gasps> and two of us are the waking world. That's Ooh. what we have to do. That's not bad. Yeah. Not bad yep, at all. That's, that's what we're going to do. Yep. Okay. Okay, so once we reveal, we can decide on the who's going to be the dream team and who's going to mm. be the well, we wakey, have to, team. Well, we have to chaos it, obviously. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> Everything I think has, has to be, be chaos. Yeah. You have to roll when you're going to play. Roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Tuesday at 3 a.m. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right without any further ado let's reveal the results so for sean the random investigator that was picked for sean is actually not as surprising as you might think it is diana <laughs> it's, oh it's the, the irony what for sean that's bullshit <laughs> Let's I guess it's surprising that I didn't expect people people to give him what he wanted, but I don't want it. She's McQueen. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> good luck getting enough cancels. Yeah, I was about to say the yeah. thing is, is like I love me some Diana, but I don't think she's good with chaos, so that'll mm-hmm. be fun. But yeah, but yeah, I, I will take it like a champ. So am I generating this now? Yeah, go for it. All right, I have Arkham DB up. Let's hit yield chaos button. Oh, oh, okay. This actually isn't nearly as bad as I expected. Hang on, all right. So hang on, let me let me save this and share it with you guys. Chaos, Diana. I know how to spell chaos. The A and the O go in the proper order. I've never <laughs> fucked that up before. All right, here we go, guys. <clears throat> <laughs> suffer with me <laughs> so my diana deck um pulled a knife and a survival knife which is not terrible okay 245 thompsons which i'm pretty happy about that's because okay. because yeah. i i electively pulled thompsons into my diana deck for uh, forgotten age and i was very pleased with that choice how, how too shriveling which is okay yeah. it's not bad uh, it's it's gonna be a little bit rough early game, but you know it'll be okay. One Saint Hubert's key, which you know is fine. Mm-hmm. My mm-hmm. allies are one Arcane Initiate, which given the <laughs> amount of spells I seem to be seeing is not terrible. One Beat Cop, which fine, and two Guard Dog, go. which I love. Hmm. Then I got wow, a first yeah. aid. Sure. And if it's bleeds. Which, you know, if it bleeds, fine, whatever. But it's got a willpower and a fight icon, so I'm fine with it. All right, so getting to my cancels. My cancels are not bad, and I pulled two Deny Existence. I pulled two Deny Existence. A Dark Prophecy. I want to see the seed that you used for this. It. I clicked the Chaos button. I know, it was a joke. Okay. Okay, so my cancels are one Dark Prophecy, two Deny Existence, and Eldritch Inspiration. And, <laughs> and I'm out. So I, uh, yep. Oh, uh, no, uh, no, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So you okay. have five, including Dark Insight. Which? Oh yeah, and then Dark Insight, of course. So you um, could get to you could get to six willpower. I could max out. I feel like most games are <laughs> probably gonna hit three to four. If like I had to three, guess, yeah. Mm-hmm. If I, I had three. to guess, <laughs> which you know is better than I expected for Chaos Diana. So I'm super okay with it. Um. Anyway, events are if it bleeds one. One Dark Prophecy, one Delve Too Deep, which I don't know if I'm ever going to have the damn guts to play, but we'll see how it goes. Two Do de- it. Two Deny Existence, one Dynamite Blast. Super okay with that. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, one Eldritch Inspiration, one Evidence, which I'll probably be committing more than anything, but still fine. Quantum Flux, uh, one Storm of Spirits, two Trusted, which actually, given the allies that I have here, mm, yeah. is not terrible. No, that's, yeah. It's pretty okay. I mean, it's still Trusted, but... yeah. Uh, warning shot with no firearms. No, no, I do have the top. You got 45. Top. Okay. It's okay. Um, two inspiring presents. God. Well, I actually pulled a really fucking good chaos deck, guys. No, hang on. The next one kills it. Okay. One leadership. <laughs> <laughs> 
one prophesy, one say your prayers. You know, with Saint, the single Saint Hubert's key, that might work. Too steadfast, which is a favorite for me and Diana, so I'm okay with that. that what is yeah. this deck? What is this? This chaos deck ended up really, actually, pretty. I'm thinking okay. Sean built this deck before the show. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's the only. Mm-hmm. I was super initiative? ready for. I was super ready for this to be an absolute train wreck, and I'm very pleased. I um, like how with with six ways, I'm sorry, six, seven, with a bunch of ways to kill enemies, you say that you'll probably be committing evidence more than playing it. Like, you have so much power to take out enemies in this deck. Yeah, you're, I think you'll be playing You're a killer. It's probably mm-hmm. true. Yeah, I suppose mm-hmm. I don't have much by way of investigating here outside of St. Hubert's Gate. You, you've got to take the initiative, which is one of your favorite cards. Yep. Mm-hmm. Torrent of I'm, Power, which, you know, with three eh. shriveling, what else am I using the charges for? Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And then an unexpected courage. You know what? This went way better than I expected. <laughs> I'm sad you didn't get any enraptured. <laughs> <laughs> also, Barrel Roller in chat says that Diana canceled the train wreck, and that's totally what happened here. Yep, yep. I totally played Ward. Just holding on to it from the beginning. I, I definitely was watching some of the chatter when people were voting, and everyone seemed to be voting for Diana because they were hoping you would get hosed on the deck and have no willpower. But I mean, I'm not, not going to have much willpower. <laughs> I'm not going to have much willpower, but it seems like I've made up for it in other ways. So I'm yeah. all in all, this could have been way worse. So I'm going to, I'm going to count myself lucky. And mm-hmm. I'm actually kind of excited to see how, because the curve isn't even that bad. Like it has a little spike at three cost, but yeah. Yeah. This might be a pretty okay deck. Unfortunate. <laughs> Smash cut to it tanking. Yeah, it probably will. <laughs> for those curious, the runner up for Sean was actually Father Mateo. For a long time, I thought you were going to end up with Father Mateo, but ended up being Diana. His pool is so small, though, that it just would have been a standard Mystic deck. Like. Yeah, it's just like a shuffled Mystic deck, pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're lucky if you get some blessed. Uh,. <laughs> All right, so the next uh, host on our list was Nick. And for Nick, we actually have a tie for which investigator uh, he's supposed to take. So the tie is between Roland and Calvin, actually. Hmm. And so, so I'm, I kind I'm of. Kinda, I kinda, go ahead. I was just going to say, I kind of want to go the Sean route and just take Roland, but that. You know, that seems to be like that I would didn't be have against a choice. The... <laughs> I was going to say in the true spirit of chaos, this should be like a coin flip, I think. Ooh. I think I think I agree, actually. So um, we're going to go to a random number generator. Okay. A.K.A. a quarter. <laughs> well, yeah. That's what I call my quarters. All right. Between one and two. Uh, Roland is one. Calvin's two. And I got one. That's right. rolling. Convenient. So, Sean got Diana <laughs> yeah. and Nick got Roland, <laughs> eh? <laughs> I'll switch to Calvin. I'll switch to Calvin. That's fine. No, I think... No, call his bluff. Be... Call his bluff. <laughs> okay. No, Calvin no, is... no, 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 Roland. Roland. Oh, geez, sorry. Well, all right. Just you guys make a decision for me. Roland. <laughs> um, Roland. Yeah, go Roland. I want to see what a chaos Roland, how bad that could be. Samesies. Die. All right, let's see here. <laughs> I mean, it's half seeker, so it can't be that bad. All right, chaos. <laughs> you say that. Are you now. sure you want to do that? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh boy. Well, let's share this. I just saw the first card on the list, and I was like, nope, please no. <laughs> um. All right. So. Uh, you need this to roll. allow sharing on your decks real quick under your profile. Damn it! Damn it! God. What no, are you do new? Do under He's under got... edit account. profile. Nope. He's... Edit account. Yeah, right. He's got incognito mode going on his decks. <laughs> <laughs> Be notified. I have it checked. Share your decks. Well, that's unfortunate then. So do I have to, like, finish the deck? Oh, no, yeah, you'd I have finish. to save it. You still have to save it. Oh, all right. <laughs> right. Chaos Rolando. Rolando. <laughs> that's the chaos version of Roland is Rolando. <laughs> he has a mustache. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Can he you... has a mustache. When I switched out to check my profile, it erased the. D- oh, well, roll no, a new one. Re- Do again, new baby. One. All right, here that, we go. That's your chaos. That's your fault for not knowing how to use Arkham DB. Right. So, <laughs> is it showing that I never use Arkham DB? Well, how okay, do you not? 
<laughs> there we go. Bottom link. Beauty. So, uh, 132 Colt, eh, one knife, boo. <laughs> one tooth of Etsley, like, why? <laughs> this is terrible! <laughs> uh, field work is okay. First aid is not great. Handcuffs are okay. Solemn vow is... One solemn vow is not great. <laughs> yeah. Strange solution can fuck right off. Well, if we're uh, doing... You know what? You only really need one solemn vow if you're playing two players. <laughs> two players? Yeah. Sure. You have two trench sure. coats, so... You oh, know. sweet. Thief um, win, let me get there. Lose. <laughs> the baby rolling. <laughs> yeah. um, if it bleeds, fine. Let me handle this. Okay, cool. Atomi- anatomical diagram. Ooh, that's rough. <laughs> that's not great. You, um, you need, what, five remaining sanity to play that? Yes. Yeah. If you've taken yeah, any so more. that's a turn one play. Like, yeah. first, no, I'm committing that for sure. Barricade is getting committed. Um, crack the case will probably get used once or twice. Double dynamite blast, so okay. that's awesome. Good. Um, Mind over matter is getting committed. Uh, seeking answers is getting committed. Oh my god! See, I forgot what seeking answers does. It investigates the next door. You know what? Okay. If you've got a trench coat and tooth of Etsley, you know, <laughs> got everything. Commit <laughs> seeking answers. Um, one taunt. Uh, and one teamwork, so I can get rid of them trench coats. Uh, <laughs> vantage point, only one of. <laughs> oh, I, like I thought you guys loved that card so much, though. I, I I was in the middle. I like vantage point, but not in this build. I don't. I like it within a very specific build of Roland, which is arguably a not a very efficient build of Roland. Um, <laughs> curiosity, not great. Eureka's fine. Inspiring presence, great with zero allies. Love it. Um, reckless assault. <laughs> I just, yeah, no allies. That's so bad. Um, Reckless Assault, Run for Your Life are both going to get played. Um, Steadfast is good and Unexpected Courage. Yeah, this is, this is shit. It's hot (laughs) garbage. (laughs) It's it's garbage. Wow. Your main weapons are 32 cold and knife, one cup each. So oh. I'm I'm obviously going to be teamworking someone else's allies to my side of the board. Uh-huh. I'll be taking some of those allies that Diana has, probably. <laughs> well, you can also inspiring presence so an ally at your location. So, I mean that's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean it's still shit, but like, it's still shit. Yeah, I'm looking for the you know the <laughs> corn in the shit. It's not great. Like, <laughs> the little kernel. Of it corn. is. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> This is not going to be fun. <laughs> We're not. Are we chaosing our upgrades too? Uh, I don't know I don't if we think can. so. I think people are just straight up upgrading. Okay, thank God. Yes, yeah, so you can. You have things you can upgrade out of, which is really good. And Dream Eaters is a high XP campaign, so <laughs> that so, is very true. Yeah. After the first scenario, I could hopefully turn this into a de- like a like a normal looking deck. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, aren't we playing Zealot? No, I thought we agreed we were going to do the two and two Dream Eaters. Yeah, two and two Dream Eaters. Okay, okay. Never mind. Sorry, yeah, missed yeah. it. It's fine. All right, Ian. Who's okay. Next? Uh, and for those curious, the next up after Roland and Calvin for Nick was Windy, actually. And oh. Father Mateo. People really had a hankering <laughs> for Father Mateo. <laughs> People have an inkling for inflicting pain is really what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am up next. And I was... Uh, I thought there were maybe some obvious answers for uh, some of the other hosts like Scott and maybe even Sean. But for me, I was curious what people picked. And eventually, it looks like uh, people kind of settled on a choice that stood out. And that is Preston. And, oh boy, I'm not excited about this at all. (laughs) Because I feel like to make Preston good, you have to build him very carefully. And... uh, Oh, yeah, that that's not gonna happen with chaos. Godspeed, Ian. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought I was gonna have a rough go. <sighs> oh boy. Okay, let's uh go ahead and share this dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, hey. let's look at uh what fate has chosen for me so for weapons i got one kukri and one baseball bat <laughs> kukri kukri preston i, f- I forgot it existed um cherish chur- one cherish keepsake one grizzly totem it's not too bad uh joey the rat yeah i got one copy so i'm happy and one <laughs> peter 
Uh, one painkillers because some Preston's definitely gonna need some painkillers. <laughs> um, so very light on assets, which with Joey the Rat is kind of makes it a little bit pointless. <laughs> I think there's what four items for him to uh, pay for. Uh, five with fine clothes, I guess. Okay, so I got fine clothes. Uh, very event heavy, and it's a lot of singletons. So one, you handle this one. I like that. <laughs> um, one bait and switch, not so much. One belly <laughs> of the beast, not so much. I'm not succeeding in evade by two or more, probably. Uh, one daring maneuver, so I can, if I succeed, I get plus two. <laughs> Oh, I guess I could trigger that belly of the beast if I could find a way to succeed on an evade. Um, two decoys. That's probably my best pickup from this chaos mm. generator. Um, one dumb luck. After I fail a skill test by two or less, I could put an enemy back on top. It's actually not mm. that bad for this build because I'll be failing a lot. <laughs> two, <laughs> two followeds. I this is so new that I have to remind myself of what this does. So choose an enemy at your location. You get plus one intellect for each damage on that enemy. If you succeed, discover one additional clue. Uh, if there's enough damage on the enemy, maybe I can get my intellect high enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> one intel report. That's good. Um, and then a whole bunch of skills. Eleven skills. So oh, one able body. Don't don't skip over your oops. Oh, one oops. Yeah, this. <laughs> So I got one oops oops. and one uh, dumb luck. (laughs) So I guess I'll finally get to try these cards out, (laughs) Silverline. Oof, I am so sorry, Ian. At least you got the two decoy. Oh, God. Yeah, this is... uh, So one able-bodied, one cunning. Cunning is fine. Um, One hatchet man. Not so much. One last chance. Uh, if I can play enough of these shitty cards to get my hand size down, then that or just chance. commit them all. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Look uh, at the what? icon balance on the yes. chart. <laughs> oh I was gonna say, Ian. Like, I know you're 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 harping on all these like oh evading, evading. But look, look at your icons. You have twenty seven agility icons <laughs> in this deck. This is evading Preston. Plus, plus, cunning and able body get more, and those aren't counted in the graph. And you don't have very many items, so you're good there for able body. Yeah, I should be able to trigger to able body because I'm and be pitching if you my look at your curve, whatever. you're gonna have so many resources. You'll always trigger cutting, so you're good. <laughs> what? Yeah, what is up with this cost curve? Like Preston is the one where you can run a higher cost curve, but <laughs> this is like ridiculous. Ugh, it's like weighted so much to one and it it would be a decent cost curve for most gators um so i'm an opportunist which i can do something with (laughs) quick thinking resourceful uh two run for your lives oh this must be where a lot of the agility icons are coming from uh and then a survival instinct and unexpected courage oh boy i don't even know what to do with this deck i'm gonna have to commit that's do what some you do. Thinking. Yeah, well, I'm draw. just thinking. What am I doing with my five, re- my extra resources each turn? <laughs> now look at the curve on this thing. The curve is pristine. Yeah, except for that one. It's a peak. That, That's all it that is. That one ten cost card. Yeah, I mean the good thing about that is you'll always have money to play lodge debts because you're not spending on anything else. <laughs> so so upgrade one is to spend all eight XP on Streetwise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I you mean, can I don't do know. any fucking thing. So I can actually do something worthwhile? Oh man, what do I. Yeah. You know, the painkillers with the desperate skills isn't the worst thing ever. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm to find with as much here, committing guys. him as, as I'm going to be doing, Grizzly Totem is actually not bad. No, Grizzly Totem is good because you will be committing a lot of these. Yeah, like most of these cards are getting committed. (laughs) So, (laughs) Oh, yeah. uh, All of a sudden, my Preston is going to be playing like Patrice. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Sure. Except (laughs) you won't be drawing cards. I'll take uh, three actions and other cards. (laughs) He'll be playing like Patrice, like my sketch is equivalent to the Mona Lisa or something. (laughs) Like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh man yeah i 
Yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to play this deck, but uh, it'll be an interesting ride. I know that there's definitely some cards in here that I barely ever use, <laughs> and I don't know <laughs> if they'll be any good in this deck. I but... call not Ian's partner. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let the dice decide. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. All right, Scott. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, and my, and my and... Uh, second, my runner-up was Skids, actually, and then Calvin third. Um, all right, now it is time for Scott, and... Do I have to eat a bull testicle live on the internet? Ooh, actually, I hadn't looked at the most updated version yet, and there was a tie for Scott as well. <gasps> I yeah. don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, there's a tie, also tied with, uh, in first place, Scott has Skids and Calvin tied. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Lucky for me, I don't. I uh, I'm okay with prairie oysters. Okay, random number was it random.org? <laughs> uh, I just did random number generator in Google, and it brings one up right in Google. Random number generator. So, uh, one is skids, two is Calvin. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Oh, thank God it's one. Oh, skids. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I, skids. I didn't have to show the internet. Oh, but also have to play skids. <laughs> 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 Which one is worse for you? See um, if you can get more than twenty-seven agility icons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seems, uh, good. Seems likely. Uh, this is not terrible. Prove it. I Ooh, mean, for, for a skids deck, it's uh, a good. hell of a qualifier. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah. for assets. Okay. Yeah, I know, God right? God damn it, did I just get shafted in this? You did. Yes, a little Hardcore. bit. Hardcore. All right, so I have a Derringer, two yeah. Trench Knife, two Thompsons. Yeah. So, yeah. decent yeah, weapon loadout. Thompson's good. I got a well, hollow... Trench Knives aren't great. Well, I mean, I ha- it's a weapon, so... <laughs> Unfair. <laughs> yeah. It's not a kukri, so... Uh. Hollowed, yeah, that's true. Hollowed Mirror is actually not bad. Yes. Like, it's yeah. a good card. Uh, yeah. I got a single guard dog and two Joy the Rat Vigils, so yeah. Ian, Ian, we're going to have to talk. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, Ian and Scott can't play together. Yeah. Um, I got one Investments, two Liquid Courage, uh, one True Grit, which is, hey, okay. Um, mm-hmm. And one well connected, so yeah. not bad. Okay. Um, events All of those are not bad. Let two let God sort them out, so that's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two coup de gras, one decoy, one followed, and that's the one that Ian had to read out, and I, I also had to read. Uh, one narrow escape. Okay. One prepared for the worst. Okay. A second yeah. wind. Sure. Yeah. And a sneak attack. All right. Huh. Like, mm. it's not... This actually not seems terrible. like a skids deck that, like, you know, someone who's played two games might post to Arkham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's, yeah. Um, skills. Uh, a single watch this. A guts. <laughs> run for sure. your life. Say sure. your prayers. And take yeah. the initiative. Like, this okay. is not, not a bad not deck. Bad. Oh my goodness. Your I icon I... spread is pretty even. Yeah. Your curve is solid. Do I have the best deck? You might. Hmm. As skids? <laughs> <laughs> Worst investigator, best deck? Oh, oh, Five weapons? A decent Ooh. amount of investigating. I think you hint a little bit more toward ma- enemy management. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Like, almost... Well, what do I have that's... Uh, clues. Nothing. Followed. Followed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it relies on you doing damage. Which, I mean, I think I'm going to do. Yes. I mean, it's, it's not terrible. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with this. And I've got, yeah. like, the say your prayers, run for your life, and a guts. Like, that, take the initiative. Like, this is a good, wow. Yeah, it's not I bad I could have gone worse. I could have gone worse. Yeah. And <laughs> just let God sort them out in a two-player game. Like, how yeah. many six held <laughs> enemies are you gonna see? <laughs> so who's our clover? No one. <laughs> we are yeah, gonna that's fail a good point. horribly. Yeah. Huh. Oh boy. Definitely not me. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. Well, shall we figure out the teams? You probably, probably should. Okay. All right. So, random number generator. Uh, let's see, do, do we have a list of our names in the show notes? Okay. So, Sean, Ian, Nick, Scott. In that order, Sean, Ian, oh. Nick, Scott. Sins. First player is. Ian okay. is paired with yourself, Nick. Okay. okay. Uh, Great. The two worst decks. <laughs> yeah, this will exactly. be awesome. Oh, boy. Okay, so Sean, that we leaves get you the and me. And now, so one and two, we decide which side we're playing. Mm. So uh, Ian and Nick, I'll roll for you. One is sleeping, one is or two is awake. Okay. You are awake. Damn it. Fuck. Oh, we're gonna get oh my god, I'm so we're sorry, gonna get so It's okay, we'll send the black cat your way. You guys stay in the dream, because it's going to be bad. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to wake up. I'll take the yeah, fucking blue pill, up. baby. <laughs> yeah. Good thing we're in the hospital already. Yeah. This, to night- travel for. <laughs> this nightmare's fantastic. <laughs> you know what the good thing is, though, in the... Well, slightly... Mm, no, I'm not going to say it, because it's a slight spoiler for Google haven't played it, but... Okay, there, so there's a way for you to get out of that issue, that scenario. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so so everyone looking at your decks, what do you think your first, you know, eight or so experience is going to go for? <laughs> Allies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Allies. Valid. I, I think I'm going to maybe invest in a couple counter spells for some more cancels. Ward twos, ward twos for sure are going to be my, my mm-hmm. first upgrades, and then maybe counter spells. I need more cancels. I think, oh god, what do I take for Clue? Because I think I have to play a little flexy. Mm-hmm. I got such Cause, shit. Because we're both killers, Sean. Yeah. So yeah. I need any Enemies type of aren't going to be a tech. problem, but if yeah. I don't draw my single Hubert's key, it's going to be rough. I mean, I have. God, I only have seven intellect icons? Fuck me. <laughs> I have nine. <laughs> 16 will. Ugh. I have uh, five Jeff, intellect icons. Jeff raises a good point. You can replace three terrible cards for one XP with Myriad. Mm. No. So grab a couple, like, decent Myriad cards for your deck so you can take out a lot of garbage. What? So. What's true. the... Does, does Guardian have a Myriad card yet? Solemn Vow, oh, which I already have right. one of that's in right. the deck. Yeah, missed out on that one. I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Myriads <sighs> are... Uh, astounding revelation. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, all dream unit. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, easy mark. Easy mark. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that I might take that. Sure. Uh, easy mark's good. Yeah. Fortuitous discovery. Yep. Can anyone here take survivor? I, I can. Could. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. sir, that's survivor. Never mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, open <clears> gate. Yep. I don't know if that works for our our scenario so far. Um, I think it's the, yeah. Segment of Onyx is can anyone take oh uh Roland I can. Roland you could take segment, I guess. <laughs> uh, and Psalm Yay. Bell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean as far as like getting What's... more clue gathering going, that's not a bad way to go. No, it's, it's not yeah. You just you know, have <clears throat> and to draw. Replacing three isn't isn't bad either. But yeah, I have no card draw, so because <clears throat> yeah. I was gonna say like I could get the seeker one that's the level zero that when you reveal it, but I have no I have no searching either. Like I have nothing. I have <laughs> shit. Yep. Such a dream. Right? Seek now, answers. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing about the segment of Onyx, at least you're replacing like three crap cards with three wild mm-hmm. icons, right? Right, exactly. So, <laughs> like, I mean, that's at, so, that's the point we're so at. Yay. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. God. Well, look forward to the, the eventual games we're going to play with these. We will definitely announce them on our social media, so pay attention. And at the very least, go subscribe to our Twitch channel if you want to see the train wrecks in motion. <laughs> or in, in incomplete frozen movie <laughs> yeah on the, on the awake no side yeah <laughs> didn't even have the courtesy of throwing me and i'm out of here <laughs> yeah <laughs> no you gotta suffer with me man <laughs> all right so uh guys i'm gonna go ahead and make the executive decision that we're gonna move it on into tentacle time sure uh Yay. ian let's start with you what you what's been grabbing you lately 
Hmm. Well, <laughs> not a whole lot because I was spending uh, the lion's share of November on uh, Nano Remo National Novel Writing Month, and I finished. I wrote a book. <laughs> Yay! A, a book is done, which is like a huge thing for me because I've always I've been writing my whole life, but I just have a big problem of actually finishing a book or story. Like I'll write mm-hmm. like a hundred pages of a book, and then a new like a new shiny light will come along, and I'll be like, "Ooh, I like that <laughs> idea," and I'll move to the next story idea. So like the whole experience was super valuable for me of like just having that discipline of no, like you're sticking to the story, you're going to write this many words per night and you're going to finish the freaking thing. And that's what I needed to finally like get that monkey off my back and finally finish a book. So, I mean, finish quote unquote, cause I still have to revise the heck out of it over the coming months. But the, uh, the big initial chunk of energy <laughs> at least has been spent in, in getting like the raw material that I can use. Um, let's see. Other than that, the only other thing, well, I was going to talk about <clears throat> one game that I've been playing, but I think I said, I missed the initial opening. <laughs> I'm going to use this time to talk about a new deck. I just, built for Arkham because it's it's interesting and I wanted to share it but I I missed the uh opening part of the episode and this is uh what I'm calling a dark Roland deck because this is a hungering blade <laughs> Roland deck oh. yeah so last time around my weird bonded um fetish was <laughs> the crystallizer and this time around it is hungering blade because that's been on my list of something to try and so I I want to give it credit, but I saw somewhere that someone had worked on a Zoe Hungering Blade a deck because they can take Mr. Rook. And so I saw that and said, hmm, who else could take Mr. Rook? And so I decided to try it out with Roland, and I built this whole story in my head that this is like corrupted Roland, who has like <laughs> seen too much. He found this crazy cursed blade, and he has basically gone to the dark side while still trying to achieve these investigations. So this Mr. Roland Rick slashes Hun- his T's and stabs his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And cover up takes a whole new meaning after he racks up like a body count. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is hungry blade and Mr. Rook are the kind of compo- key component pieces. Also hollowed mirror. Cause you need something to heal. Um, the horror. I also went really crazy and threw Blood Eclipse in there. Um, Because this is Dark Roland. Like, he is meddling with Dark Forces. Um, Let's see. On the hunt. Hashtag Dark Roland. (laughs) Yeah. On the hunt so that he can grab more enemies to kill. Logical reasoning to heal horror. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's super different. The rest is kind of what you would expect. I have emergency aid to heal some of the damage from Blood Eclipse. Um, I've had worse. So yeah, anyway, I tried it out against uh, Excelsior, actually, with Luke as the partner. And it actually did really well. And I have to try it against other scenarios, because I think the thing with Excelsior is that there's quite a few uh, targets, if you're willing to kill them for <laughs> for a Dark Hungering Roland. So... I did not have a problem with uh, taking horror from the bloodlust. I think only once at the beginning. And other than that, he was just keeping that blade fed. (laughs) And so I had all three bloodlusts on there. And uh, Mr. Rook helps a lot with that because he can just grab, as soon as you're ready to go, he can grab those bloodlusts or find the hungering blade. So, Mm. yeah, it's a really fun deck. It's... I'm still going to say Hungering Blade is not, like, the efficient choice. Like, there's better Guardian weapons. Just, like, the amount of work you have to put into it to get it set up. Um, and it's still not super consistent because it's one limit, one per deck. But, uh-huh. man, it is fun. Like, it's it, it's kind of like playing a... We were talking about side quests last episode, but it's like a, your own little mini side quest. Like, every time you kill an enemy, you hear a little ding. Cause you can <laughs> add a resource. So I need to I need to play it some more and refine it, but it's more interesting. Blood for the Blood least. Blade! <laughs> I did have a nice Blood Eclipse moment where uh, it was a tentacle. <laughs> so three damage to nothing. Excellent. 
Uh, anything non-Arkham related? I mean, I suppose, like, I wanted to say for you guys who are doing the National Novel Writing Month, I think I said this last time, but just just congrats for finishing a creative project. Mm-hmm. There's, there's just so much inherent value in just fucking finishing it. So, I know you did, and Nick, I'm fairly certain you're going to talk about yours, and I know Matt Matt was uh, was right there too, so just good job sticking through it, guys. Yeah, it was definitely, whew, there was, a, you know, there's a few nights where you're like, oh, I got to write, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just kind of stick with it. It was funny because every time I had an off night and couldn't write that much and I would get tired, then the next night I would inevitably like just write like crazy. So after a <laughs> while I learned there was just a rhythm to it. Excellent. Nick, how about you? Uh, yeah, so I also did NaNoWriMo. Um, I did it for the uh, fifth book in my Space Pirate series, Astral Tides. I hit 50,000 words by, I think, with like four days to spare. So I think by November 26th. Um, and then, unfortunately, my uh, word count per day, I was going to keep writing until it was done. Um, but my word count per day tanked because, unfortunately, on Thanksgiving morning, uh, our 14-year-old dog passed away. Mm. Um, and so I've been, uh, the next few days were basically um, basically being uh, the emotional support for my wife and also um, kind of taking up like more of the parenting uh, duties so that she could properly grieve because he's only been in my life for the last six years, but he's been in her life for the last 14. So it was a considerably bigger blow to her um, than it was to me. Yeah, no one but likes we are... losing a doggo. That's no fun. No, no, definitely not. Um, but we are on the upward swing. I mean, days are obviously, you know, they're, they're touch and go for her, but um, we're generally making, you know, we're generally getting back to a more normal rhythm. Um. And so with my uh, getting back to the computer and work time, rather than working on my novel, I've been working on my RPG, which is also set in the same universe. Um, So I've been really pounding out uh, the progress on that. Uh, Just kind of avoiding the novel, I guess, because I'm like, uh, like I'm I'm about three quarters of the way through it. I'm close, but uh, I just for some reason now that that creative writing part has left my brain and I'm rather than nipping it in the bud and, and, or rather trying to get back to it. I'm enforcing myself to, I'm instead focusing on working on the RPG, uh, which is fun and really enjoyable. I love, um, what (laughs) are you trying to convince bro? Oh, (laughs) no, it is. It is. I, I really enjoy this. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, but that's been pretty much me. Haven't really played much other than that. So, other, other, I, oh, I restarted. I, I mean, it's neither really here nor there, but I, I started a, a fourth playthrough of Alien Isolation recently uh, <laughs> because I got the Alien RPG, uh, the core book. I got that mm. um, in the mail, and that made me want to play. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. I played that. Yeah, I but. still need to play Isolation. I've never played Oh, that. my God. It's so good. <laughs> it is so good. Uh, then also I uh, wanted to throw it out there that Matt Newman's in our chat tonight. And he uh, threw out his uh, <clears throat> his book is actually going to be a thing. So apparently, you know, we talked to him. Ab- we talked about it with him. There we go. Prepositions tonight are hard. <laughs> uh, we, we talked to him about it. God damn it. Why can't I just. OK, I'm just going to mm, power okay. through now. Um, and uh, so he wants everyone who's interested to go follow his Twitter for news. So if you haven't already, go follow Matt at Natsuno Yoru. It's N-A-T-S-U-N-O. R O Y O R U. That was rough. <laughs> I could have done that better. You got there. <laughs> we got there. Scott. Well, I did my own version. Well, <laughs> I was on the server where you guys are doing NaNoWriMo. and I was like, I'm going to do one haiku a week, which I, <laughs> I hit. So that was great. Um, the other thing I was going to do was do all 900 Korok seeds in Zelda. <laughs> So I got this app that you can use to track the seeds so you know you know which one you had. And I got down to the final Korok seed on the map in the app and I looked on my game and I have 899 seeds. <laughs> Ooh, that's infuriating. <laughs> so I I had to take a breather. That's that's the same as having zero seeds, basically. Yeah. <laughs> 
So now I'm in the process. So I did not complete my NaNoWriMo goal of getting all the Korok seeds. So now I have to go through the app, reset my progress, and look on the map in Zelda and like cross-reference 899 seeds oh to see where the one I'm missing is. Oh, no. So instead of doing that, I've been playing Fallen Order. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Nintendo, you're dead to me. Um, Fallen Order, uh, the Star Wars game, has been really fun. I found... Okay, so I'm not a person to play Dark Souls or Sekiro or yeah, we've Bloodborne. Like, yeah. But <laughs> I started playing Fallen Order on Jedi Knight, which is like the normal, like second from the bottom difficulty. And I got to a point where I was like, I'm I'm parrying, but like I'm like, I just want to feel freaking powerful in a game. Like, there's no reason some little rat should be able to take on a Jedi with a lightsaber. Um, and I honestly found I wasn't having fun. So I went to story mode, and I am now having a blast. And there is still, like, they're still parrying, and they're still challenged to the bosses and stuff, but a single swamp rat isn't going to kill half my health, which is what was driving me bonkers. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. That sounds pretty souls to me. Oh, it was just... And like I, I was not having fun. And then I was like, well, it's either I stop playing the game or I switch to story mode. I switched to story mode. I was like, oh, actually, this is fantastic. And so now I'm having a blast. So, yeah. And then Excellent. I played, so, played so, Marvel again. Wait, mm-hmm. hang on. Before we move on. Yep. Fall in order, thumbs up? Now that I'm playing on story mode, thumbs up. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Because I, I, that's what I look for in Star Wars games. Like, I want a... Sit down after a long day and romp through the Star Wars universe using mm-hmm. the Force and swinging the lightsaber. Sure, right? Like that. You know that's... what? I, I kind of like. I know there's plenty of arguments against it, but I kind of wish the Soul series did have an easy option for people to access the coolness without having to worry about the difficulty because mm-hmm. they're kind of separate components. So yep. I'm glad that they went that way with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's some people who play it on like Jedi Grandmaster, and I'm just like, that sounds like torture and not and i was watching streams i'm like how is this fun you've been fighting two rats for an hour and a half (laughs) like okay cool uh and then i've started playing marvel a little bit so marvel champions but i see that's on your list so yes yes go ahead so uh for my part i have been playing pretty much exclusively arkham and what little uh game time i've had that hasn't been arkham has been devoted to marvel champions finally picked that up uh a little while ago and yeah, it it came out really well. I'm digging it. Um, currently favor She Hulk mm-hmm. and Black Panther. Interesting. Again, I'm, I'm only an... I'm only a few games in. Iron I'm Man's Iron great Man. when he gets rolling, but yeah. oh man, I don't have the patience. Oh, I don't have the patience. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but again, it's just, it's, oh man, it, we've talked about Sentinels of the Multiverse a few times on the podcast, and this is what I wanted Sentinels to be, where mm-hmm. your hero feels really distinct. I really think they nailed it with the ebb and flow of the hero versus alter ego mechanic. I think that's what makes the game feel really kind of unique yeah. in the superhero space. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I like that there's customization, but it's not crazy heavy out of the gate. It's not mm-hmm. going to be... I don't think it's going to be crazy going forward. I plan to t- play this game very casually myself, so... Um, and it plays that way, though, right? Like, yeah. the, the deck building is easily casually access- accessible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to the fact that the expansions that will follow like your your hero expansions are just going to be operable decks so Mm -hmm. the first thing i'm going to do is just open it up and sleeve it and play it and then from Mm -hmm. there decide if i want to make any changes to it Mm -hmm. and you know i'm playing it casually so as long as they're not terrible i probably won't so it's just going to be it's very modular and quick to set up compared to arkham and very accessible for people who aren't into heavy card games and i feel like it you know, everyone wants to compare the different co-op LCGs against each other, but I feel like it occupies a very different level of space in my brain than does Arkham. And they, yeah, they can coexist sure. very, very well. Mm-hmm. I think it... it... So we, we talked a bit about Keyforge, and you saying you, you love Keyforge. Mm-hmm. Um, I know this is co- cooperative, com- competitive, but what I'm going to get at is um, 
The thing I don't like about Keyforge is I love the tactical decision making, but the lack of strategic depth as far as like before the game mm-hmm. and during, like because I can't customize my deck or anything like that, I have to buy until I find a good deck or play yeah. with a mediocre deck, whatever. I find that um, Marvel gives me that intermediary where like Arkham is like, okay, I got to sit down for half an hour, build a deck, think about icons, all this stuff. Marvel, I could build a deck in 10 minutes and it still gives me that strategic option, but I love the tactical play that they totally borrowed from Keyforge and feels also borrowed from Star Wars LCG. Yes. Right. Where it's just like, Sure. Play your whole hand this turn because next turn you're drawing up everything, right? Yeah. Just uh, just dump your cards when you're not exactly. happy with them. Yeah, and it's it's very Patrice, right? Like, mm-hmm. So, um, and so I I'm finding Marvel just hits those things for me, and it's a nice light game. The only complaint I would say about it is I think the Rhino scenario is a bad intro to the game because it's boring. Like, and I realize that intros to games should be somewhat boring, but I found the Rhino scenario, like, total snooze fest. Like, too boring. But I, having played it, like, three or four times now, I would think I would tend to agree. The first time, I didn't really feel that iffy about it because I was, you know, learning. Learning, yeah. But yeah, I think it's it's like Passage Through Mirkwood for Lord of the Rings, <laughs> and it's, it's like the gathering for Arkham. You're probably never going to really enjoy it as much as you did the first time but it's it's but at least the gathering like i mean the gathering you're moving through places like there's acts and agendas and stuff's changing and then a boss comes out and all this stuff like Mm -hmm. rhino's like uh hit the big guy yep (laughs) right like yeah thwart his plan like there's no interplay and there's no like interesting enemies and i don't know it occupies a very, very, very basic, simplistic place within the mechanics of the game, yeah. for sure. It's definitely the training scenario. Yeah, like, super training. I just don't see, like... <laughs> I, I, will st- I will still we go... We get it, Scott. I will You're st- good at Marvel. <laughs> I know, I'm not even that good. Um, but <laughs> uh, but I, I will still play Night of the Zealot, right? And play sure. through it and enjoy it. Um but I can I can see myself never playing the Rhino scenario again. Sure, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think but I, beyond I'm that, probably gonna I mean, break Rhino out only for the purposes of teaching people who aren't necessarily very familiar with card games. Right. right. Yeah. If but someone has played that, an LCG no before, they can play any other here or any other enemy. They can as play a, Claw for sure. Yeah, to learn. But yeah, so I've really been enjoying it. Um, like I said, I'm going to be pretty casual on it, but I'm looking forward to the expansions. I'm definitely going to grab me some some cap when he comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, when when they finally release a, a an X Men expansion, you can you can kiss Mythos Busters goodbye. Um, it's good. we're, we're going to start Marvel Busters and we're talking <laughs> about how awesome Storm is because I love me some Caster chicks. <laughs> what no? <laughs> you? I know completely off brand. Um, no, but legit, if they get X-Men into this game, I will be so happy. I don't know if... if I, I have no idea where the licenses are at for that to happen, but I really hope it does. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think that's probably a decent time to end it off. So thanks, everyone, for joining us for episode 72 of Mythos Busters. And we will see you all next time for 73.